Pokemon Sword was sabotaged. Oh no, by Game Freak? No. Nope. Well, maybe a little. What a treat. By me. Oh god. The rules were simple. I played through Pokemon Sword for the first time, but every time one of my party members fainted, I got to unleash a brutal sabotage to halt his progress. Some were disruptive. Hold the controller upside down. Ah, oh, jeez. Some were weird. Teach scary face to everyone who can learn it. <laughs> And some were absolutely disgusting. I still can't drink milk to this day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but he wasn't. The beginning of the game is kinda slow, so here's a quick recap of what happened. We named ourselves Delicious Jam because Mom ran out of room on our birth certificate. Met some guy named Hop and gave him a very fitting voice. Wait up, Delicious Jam! Picked up the champion of the region at a train station. And then met our three potential starter Pokemon. Briefly, because they instantly ran away. <laughs> He's just like, alright everyone, pick your Pokemon. And he throws the balls out, <laughs> they all escape and run away. <laughs> We found Grookey hiding in a bush, so Peter added it to his team, although he got a little confused about what franchise we were playing. And then, it was time to battle! We effortlessly fed Hop his first helping of defeat, a taste that he'll very quickly grow used to. And then it was time to see the wield! You... wait, do you mean world? No, the slumbering wield! Oh. For four story progress! You again? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Dead. What? You gotta be crazy. <laughs> Dead. Anyway, after that whole ordeal, I said goodbye to mom, and I stomped around in some grass, and I grabbed a bird, and I named it Beat Rice. You guys have no idea what horrors I'm gonna unleash upon this bird. Well, not for another ten minutes or so, at least. Right here is where the challenge gets serious. This decisive battle with Youngster Benjamin. An unexpected blip bug. <laughs> an unexpected blip bug attack. Atta oh, that's, that's kind of hard. An unexpected blip bug attack. My God, this is the hardest Pokemon. An unexpected blip bug attack causes Peter's Nicket to kick it, leading to the first sabotage of the game. Hold the controller upside down. Ah, oh, jeez. You have to play like that until the next sabotage. Yeah, this is a sabotage all about how my controller got flipped, turned upside down. And this will take a minute, just sit right there, and we'll show you how I became the champ of a place called Galair. Speaking of upside down, this is the point in the game where everything we knew about Pokemon got flipped on its head. The wild area. A place where Pokemon roam wild in an area. <gasps> I can move the camera. Oh, jeez. Oh, you found the note. Oh, I, <laughs> I wasn't scared of the note. I was scared of the onyx. The note just says like, boo. <laughs> oh, God. After that onyx expected encounter, I captured another core member of the team, a Vulpix called Nine Butts. And then Agumon evolved, or Digivolved, or whatever. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. God, he's an awkward teenager. I don't love that. Yeah. Uh, and just like an angsty teen, Agumon didn't want to play outside, so we made our way to Motostoke. At which point, I let Peter stop holding his controller upside down. Mostly because I didn't want to watch him bumble around the city for half an hour. Well, Shannon, joke's on you, because I got used to it being that way, so it still took me forever to find the hotel. Damiel, get revenge for me, would ya? Of course I got you covered, mate! <laughs> What could be better than a battle in a lovely lobby? And that was Peter's sabotage to all of us. After tons of dialogue and even more terrible voices. Watch out, Toys and Jam! He's right behind you! We backtrack to pick up a slowpoke named Einstein and blaze a path of destruction along Route 3. Starting with Hop, of course. I couldn't miss an opportunity to beat that twerp into the dirt. There you go. Back into the dirt with you. But Peter soon learned that when you hurt others, you hurt yourself. When facing schoolboy Peter, he takes a Doppler attack to the face and gets his second sabotage oh, of the run. Goodbye! Poor schoolboy right. Peter would be the one who gets me a sabotage. I thought we were friends. I thought we were me. I thought you were me. Poor sweet Beatrice tried to save me from the sabotage by evolving, but she could only prolong the inevitable. Peter lost himself to anger and then poetically lost to himself. For that... I took the life of one of his dear teammates. Bye, Einstein! It was time for the inventor of gravity to feel the weight of Peter's mistakes. <laughs> Shannon, Einstein didn't invent gravity. It's just like a force of nature that he deep. And you didn't learn your lesson, did you? Because as soon as we got to Turfield... Hop, if you challenge me to a battle right now, I will beat you so hard you won't shit for a week. That's, uh... Wow. In the Turfield Gym Challenge, I pushed those Wooloo around like they were little hops and trounced the gym trainers with Nine Butts Ember. This is fine. And then it was time to pull up the big weed, Milo the Gym Leader. His Pokemon stood no chance against all six of those Dynamax bots, except... He lost his Dynamax and got struck by a Max Strike, holding on with one HP. 
but with a final ember taking down Milo's Eldegoss, his ass was grass. But I didn't let Peter celebrate for long, because I introduced the second rule of the playthrough. Every time he defeats a gym leader, he gets another sabotage. Ah, an unwanted gift. How generous of you. For the first gym sabotage, I made Peter go to the wild area and do the first raid he could find. This Pokemon would replace Agumon in the party until after I beat the next gym leader. Which is a water gym, by the way. <laughs> no, I mean, that's okay. Maybe I'll get something like awesome, like a Charizard or a Machamp or... Time hole! <laughs> the loss of Agumon clearly hit Peter hard as he struggles in the next route. Yeah, my giant steel bird died to a cotton candy. Explain that to me. I figured that was painful enough, so I gave him a silly sabotage this time. You can't say any names, only your own. What? You had to refer to every trainer, every Pokemon as Peter. Oh, jeez. Every time you screw up, you have to sell one of your items. Okay, that's not terrible. Oh, yeah. Goldie. Hey, but Go get him, nine butts. Failure. What are the chances? Another breeder, Peter. Is that a Ralts? Who? Ralts? Failure. Shannon? Failure. I don't know how many more of these roving bands of Peters I can take. But it didn't last long because I was forced to battle my toughest opponent yet. A wild Peter. Mirror Coat reflected Ninebots' Ember back from massive damage, and Wobbuffet's Shadow Tag ability prevented Peter from switching out or running away, creating the ultimate sabotage trap. Oh, if only there was some other mode of escape. Oh. I decided to raise the stakes and told Peter that the next Pokemon who faints won't be waking back up. So I lose another team member. Perfect. At least I have my new baby jelly to comfort me. Unless it faints first. It was Timepole. Timepole died. Onwards to the Holbury Gym. You, you. Even now, the evil seed of what you've done germinates within you. After get, effortless, get, get, get. Uh, effort, where am I? The fuck? Effortlessly solving the water puzzle, Peter makes his way to challenge leader Nessa, inching ever closer to his next sabotage. During the battle, I had not one, not two, not three. Actually, just, just two. Pokemon faint, which meant a more severe sabotage. I made Peter take his beloved chimichanga out back and put him down. But that's not all. It was time for a gym sabotage as well. He got served with a fork and spoon punishment, having to use those utensils to work his Joy-Cons. It was truly my just desserts. And it was fitting, because it was time to meet Chairman Rose at the seafood restaurant. One day I want to be that rich. I don't have to wear pants anywhere. Put some clothes on! Moving on to the Galar Mines, we catch a new mainstay of the party and get challenged by a trainer named Bead. Scoliosis? Oh, Solosis. Solosis. But I just threaten him with my fork and he runs away scared. But he wasn't as lucky with the next encounter. Team Yell shears Hops Wooloo, which I count as a sabotage for Peter. Put your controllers upside down. <laughs> no! Shit. <laughs> oh, I don't want to fight you. I can't help myself from running into stuff. Nope, 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 <laughs> nope, nope. Damn it. After bumbling my way back to Motostope, fighting Marnie's violence-filled rat, and crying myself to sleep, I was finally ready to take on the Fire Gym Challenge. And Blubs evolved just in time to become Kaboo's worst nightmare. That's one, two, three strikes, you're out. Knocked him out of the park. And look, Baby Jelly evolved from doing absolutely nothing, just like a regular baby. Got a lot of weird nipples, though. What happens if you flick it? With Kaboo somewhere out in orbit, Peter is finally free from his controller curse. But a new sabotage is here to take its place. I make him sell all his potions and use the money to buy Pokey Dolls. I'm a doll man now, I... I guess. In the wild area, I found a firestone, which allowed Nine Butts to finally grow into its name. And and then some. My god, he's he's still growing! It won't stop! Oh god, everything is ass! At Hammerlock, we make a shocking discovery about Chairman Rose. Is he wearing like a house arrest ankle bracelet? <laughs> Which is foreshadowing. And then head into the battle cafe, where Peter quickly learns that he's made a huge mistake. No! You switched no. the wrong Pokemon. I did. <laughs> oh what? shit! In the g Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. For that devastating loss, Shannon unleashed not only the cruelest sabotage of the run, but the absolute worst thing that anyone has ever made me do. A spoonful of garlic, a spoonful of roasted garlic and peppers, a spoonful of garlic and herb, and one cup of milk. Mix it all together, and you get the most vile creation known to me. Garlic milk! Are you okay? Is your brain broken? <laughs>
Oh boy, Shannon, we need to move on. Even just talking about it is making me... West of Hammerlock, we run into Team Yell again and stomp them into the ground before meeting my personal favorite character. I don't even know what voice this would be. There's question marks. <laughs> <laughs> just a toilet flushing. My name's Opal. If you want to know more, have a look at my league card. It's like, man, this is a grocery list. <laughs> She'll go to the grocery store later with her card and she'll be like, what aisle is this in? And they'll be like, man, that's she, you. <laughs> she just buys a whole bunch of mirrors. <laughs> and then we meet my personal favorite character, Big Monkey. Ah! Followed by a battle with everyone's least favorite character. Oh, we already beat him. And now we enter the Stow On Side Stadium to take on our fourth gym leader. After spinning my way through the dizzying puzzle, I finally make it to fighting expert Bia, where... <laughs> Oh, okay, we already won again. But with victory comes a price. For this gym sabotage, I forbade Peter from using healing mm. items until the next gym. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't stop me from folding bead like a cheap suit. Are you an insane? No! That's why I sent you to trouser school. I mean, trainer school. <laughs> Sorry, I have pants on the brain. Heading north, we enter Glimwood Tangle, a stunningly beautiful area of the game that would definitely give me sensory overload in real life. I grab an impidip na- Oops. I grab an impidimp named Play-Doh, who evolves before I can even use him. And we immediately head into the next gym to face the leader of the fairies, Opal. Did somebody poke Myrtle and see if she's still alive? Baby Jelly makes quick work of Weezing and Mawile, and then destroys Togekiss with a lightning bolt straight from the bowels of Zeus. And after breaking every bone in her arm to throw that giant Pokeball, Opal sends out a Gigantamax Al Creamy, ready to serve Peter his just desserts. Shannon, you made that joke earlier. Shh, no one remembers that by now. Anyway, this Pokemon was no piece of cake. Oh, that one's much better. It sliced through my team like a hot knife through butter, until the Gigantamax wore off, and then it became a battle of attrition. What the heck? The defense on this Pokemon. I'm confused. But I still use Confused Ray. Now both of you are confused. All three of you are confused. All three. The only one not confused is me. I'm just watching a bunch of people bumbling around. Peter, how long have we been doing this battle? Get a watch, Grandma. It Grandma, it's me, Shannon. <laughs> so I haven't hit myself in confusion once. Watch me do it this time, though. Peter, I can't remember the face of my mother. Shannon, I'm gonna be here until next Wednesday. <laughs> I remember Wednesdays. And after what felt like a lifetime, he finally creamed that cake and took home the prize money. His $12,000, go see a Star War. <laughs> oh boy, did I need that money. Because Shannon hit me with another doozy of a sabotage. Box everyone except Play-Doh, catch the first five Pokemon I encounter, and just make a brand new team out of them. The first edition was a Corva Knight named Beat Twice. Beat Twice. Beat Twice. <laughs> the bird's so nice, I beat it twice. No, not using that. Nope. <laughs> Second was an e Second was an e was an ex- God, the power steering on this bike. It was an Excadrill. His name was Senior Reginald. At the time, we had no idea how fitting this name would be because then- It's my daddy! Yeah. And so Junior Reginald joined the party. Hooray. But a second Excadrill is still better than what we caught next. An accidental Eldegoss. I know right where I'm putting this one. For the last member of my team, I decided on Hitmonlee because I wanted someone that could actually fight. But I had no idea exactly how much of a fight this creepy chicken leg could put up. I think we've been doing this so long that we're starting to like get delirious. I swear, I did not have them. Are you fucking kidding oh. me? Hi, jump kit. And now you're gonna take him a bird? 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes of whittling HP, chucking balls and healing my boys, and this thing was still kicking. Until it didn't. One misplaced high jump kick made all that work for nothing. There was only one thing left to do. Try again. So. Nope. No. Nope. Nah. -uh. Nope. That's it. He's dead. So because these Hitmonlees were higher level than us, they were significantly harder oh to catch. So not worthy. We shoved a bunch of candies in Beat Twice and Play-Doh, yeah. causing Play-Doh to evolve. Oh, yeah, ew. Disgusting! After a couple, <clears throat> accidents, murder, we finally nabbed a Hitmonlee named Tank Hannigan and could move on with our lives. The first test of my new team was east of Hammerlock, where Hop decided to test his luck against me once more. Oh, God, look at that level difference. We're going to get slaughtered. Oh, I'm going to beat him so bad his grandchildren's yamper's going to feel it. Skipping ahead to spare Hop the embarrassment, we blazed through Route 8, wailing on the low-level trainers until... My hubris got the better of me. <gasps> what? What? I can't believe you got a sabotage. No. Surprise, motherfucker. I was completely unprepared for this, so I gave Peter the first sabotage that came to mind. Eat a pickle. No hands, no eyes. No dignity. So what was going through your mind during this sabotage, Peter? Mmm, pickle. <laughs> That's it? I mean, after garlic milk, a regular pickle was delicious. <laughs> ah, choked on the fork.
After arriving in Sarchester, we head straight to the stadium and... Start the next gym challenge. Stepping on the wrong tile causes you to fall right through, so even ground is trying to sabotage me now. Can you hear me? Are there people down there? <laughs> but those are the people who fell and broke their legs. They can't they get out. The battle with gym leader Gordy started off great. He wasn't even facing the right way. <laughs> he just couldn't bear to watch Tank Hannigan absolutely destroy his team. Leaving Gordy in the dust, I gave Peter his next sabotage. No healing whatsoever until the end of the next gym. Well, it's a good thing I have two teams to switch between. Except Tank Hannigan no immediately yes. gets knocked out by a little hail. He's from Florida, Shannon. He's not used to the snow. For that little blunder, I made Peter sell all his healing items to buy more dolls. My entire house is literally filled with dolls. I, I think my wife left me. And if that wasn't enough, a piece of cake battle with Hop took a shocking turn when his Italian sniped Baby Jelly. But oh, Baby just got sniped! Fuck. And my punishment for that was having to teach everybody scary face. Here we go, everyone. After infusing our bike with the power of Jesus, we crossed the water and reached the gates of heaven. I mean, Spike Mouth. Yeah, more like the gates of hell. I was forced to battle Marnie with her devil rat. But luckily, we already had a demon on our side. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. What? Upon entering Spikemouth, we realized the town itself is the gym. It's also just one long road. All we need is a golem with rollout, and we can take out every trainer here in an instant. Oh, that's why the Geodude family didn't make the cut this gym. He's too dangerous to be left alive. After a ton of battles with Team Yell, Peter made it to the gym leader with a crack squad of... Oh, God, they're falling apart. Remember, Shannon's last sabotage forbade me from healing whatsoever. But before we can do battle, we're forced to sit through the most uncomfortable concert ever. <clears throat> you sack! Right out the gate, Senior Reginald gets taken down by his Scrafty, who's avenged by Beat Rice, who then gets taken up by Malamar. It is madness. Even Plato, Peter's trump card in this battle, goes down in a blaze of glow. Well, shame. And after that, his whole team falls apart like a house of cards. You have no more Pokemon that can fight. Shannon. Shannon! No, I'm not going out there to fight. <laughs> Quickly, Shannon, I need you out there. <laughs> Oh, the slaughter of Spikemouth, an entire team's worth of sabotage. The darkness envelops and threatens to consume, but lo, an olive branch is extended in my darkest hour. I offer Peter a choice. He may redo the battle with only Play-Doh. Okay, that's all right. No pressure. If successful, he skips the sabotage. But if he fails, every member of his team gets released. Honestly, I was just afraid that if I said no, he'd make me like eat the cartridge or something. So I said, let's do it. Except we weren't allowed in with only one Pokemon. So uh, we brought Shithawk along. The rematch started off strong with Plato taking out Scrafty in one hit. But once again, Obstagoon proved to be too much of a threat. All seemed lost, but one shining ray of hope remained. Oh, fuck. We've been on this gym for too long. Baby Jelly and Tank Hannigan cornered Pierce in an alley and beat him up to get up the dark badge. Which wasn't that hard, considering the whole damn town's an alley. For the gym sabotage, I made all of Peter's Pokemon hold beans and sausages. I don't know. It's, it's hard to keep coming up with these. And after nothing particularly important happens, we step into Hammerlock Stadium to face Raihan, the dragon-type leader. Let the winds blow, dude! <laughs> and I'm just over here like... <laughs> Sand? Why would you put sand in here? <laughs> Raihan's team immediately puts on the pressure, with Tank just barely managing to hang on. Unfortunately... Oh no! The sand! The sand! The sand chin! <laughs> oh my gosh, I just gotta sit here and watch it happen. Once again, Tank Hannigan dies because of the weather. First some snow, and now a little sand. I already told you, Shannon. It's because he's from Florida. D D Florida is known for sand. Well, he's never been to the beach. He's from Tallahassee. No, he's not. Brian Gigantamaxes his Duraludon, taking out Agumon as well as half the crowd in the stadium. But he's no match for our soggy boy. Thanks to Blubs, the dragon badge was mine. And so was a new sabotage. Leaving it up to chance, I flip coins to determine the fates of the first two Pokemon on Peter's team, Agumon and Tank Hannigan. Heads for beheading, tails for... it's tail on the team. You yuck. Tails. Oh, thank God. Heads. Oh, Wait, Shannon, where's the head on Tank Hannigan? I, I don't know, just... And now for the final gym sabotage. Baby Jelly is ready to have a baby of her own. 
What? For this next sabotage, you are going to go to the Pokemon daycare and fulfill Baby Jelly's wish to have a baby Baby Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to send Baby Jelly in with a pack of wieners, because, I mean, that's what she's going in to find. We head out and catch a Morgrim to be Baby Jelly's baby daddy. Ugh. And then we leave the two of them at the daycare to get busy. Do you have the Pokemon yet? Is there a third one? Is there Peter, another one Peter, there? Peter, 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 give, so, them the, give them some space. Watch through the window. And before we knew it, a new life was born. Baby, baby jelly, ready to experience everything the world has to offer. Yeah, until we make it to the Pokemon League and I shove that thing so deep in the PC, not even a search bar can find it. I took this opportunity to stock up on potions since someone kept forcing me to buy dolls. And then we head out into the wild area to snag a Drake Loke named Uber. Uber? Why? Because he's giving someone a ride. Look at him. <laughs> God, the guy on right? top looks petrified. And after a small investment, he evolved into an Uber pool. Because there's two of them. With our team complete, we were ready to take on the semifinals at Windon Stadium. First up was Marnie, ready to take revenge for the thrashing we gave her back in Spike. Nope. Oh. She's done. Yeah, I heard her more Pico went to anger management after the first battle back in Motostoke. Oh, good for him. And then, with absolutely no rest, it was time for the final battle versus our longtime rival, Hopeless Hop. He made his way onto the pitch and was bet with our six-man spanking train. After an easy victory. Because you were overleveled. Shh. We tracked down a key to ride the monorail to Rose Tower to find out why Leon stood us up for dinner. But standing in our way was an absolutely furious Oleana. Yeah, because Leon stood her up too. Blubs and Mama Jelly made quick work of her team, with Ninebots finishing up and taking it the trash. But Oleana had one last trick up her sleeve. Any gym challenger who's made it this far would be no pushover. Wait, pushover? That gives me an idea. Come over next to the edge. Look. Check that view. <laughs> As we climbed our way back up the tower, Chairman Rose tried to convince Leon to cancel the finals because of some tragedy that's going to happen in a thousand years. Okay. But we hold the finals anyway, because that's dumb. Our first match was against Nessa, the water type gym leader. Uber ejects his passengers and takes down her glossy pod and Barrascuta while Mama Jelly shocks the rest into submission. In her final moments, Nessa calls out a Hail Mary. Flood the stadium. Kill everybody. There's a guy in the stands frantically going around handing out waivers, like, please sign them quickly. Next up was the fighting master B. 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 I. Whose Pokemon stood no chance against Meat Twice. Meat, Me did you meat? say Meat Twice? <laughs> the, the script says Meat Twice. Oh, God. Did you not just read? Just, just... Anyway, it, it drill pecked her team to death. A strategy that won't work against Raihan, the final challenge standing between us and Leon. His Torkoal yawns and makes Uber drowsy, which is. You know, a massive safety hazard. So, we sent out Ron, who has absolutely been with us the whole adventure, just in time to catch an earthquake and... Died! Died! Death! <laughs> I give Peter his sabotage right away. No Dynamaxing during Leon's battle. No Gigantamaxing either. Raihan's foolish Gudra foolishly uses Rain Dance, like a fool, which makes our blubs even more powerful. We wash away the rest of his team with ease and finally won the right to challenge Leon. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. A terrible tragedy will happen in 1,000 years, so I'm canceling this tournament today for some reason. If you want to stop me, here's my full address, home phone number, and social security information. Good luck. We head straight to the underground power plant with absolutely no detours along the way to challenge Rose and stop the darkest day. Shannon, it's, it's underground. There's no wind. It's just tickling his, his cheek. <laughs> it's <laughs> actually <laughs> alive. Don't look so glum. Ron, who again has been with us this whole time, melts all of Rose's steel Pokemon with ease, right down to his Gigantamax Copperaja. With Rose out of the way, we head up top to face. What the f is that? A quick battle forces Eternatus into the sky. Who then Dynamaxes, I guess? But not to worry, we've got Hop on our side. Don't worry, Delicious Jam, <laughs> I got this one. You don't need Pokeballs to catch these hands. As expected, Hop was absolutely no help. So we took out the fancy rocks we stole from the slumbering wield and summoned the legendary dog Pokemon. Zacian and Zamazenta did basically all the work, but that didn't stop us from taking the credit and Eternatus. Wow. With the day saved, the legendary dogs rode off into the sunset never to return. Because we didn't do the post game. Three days later, it was time to finally have our match with the unbeatable champion. And I thought, hey, if I want to beat Leon, why not use that dragon snake I just caught the other day that already single-handedly beat him? We grabbed Eternatus from the box and gave him a very fitting name for someone about to mow down Leon's team. It's the Leon Mower. Leon, the Leon Mower. mower. <laughs> and it helped that he already looked like a lawn mower, so... Leon started the fight with the sword and shield Pokemon. But it didn't stand a chance against our Leon Mower. 
who looked a lot bigger a few days ago. Shrinkage! Haxorus goes down in one hit, and then Seismitoad... Oh. Oh! I can't get hit by an earthquake. Get out of here with that show shit! Oh my god! A rock got caught in Leon Mower's blaze, putting him out of commission and earning me a sabotage. Saving that for after the fight, Agumon comes out to get revenge until Leon threatens to send out Cinderace, forcing a switch to Blobs. But then, we find out that Uber's been contracted to Leon. He's a lift now. That traitor takes Beat Twice and Agumon for a ride before getting run off the road by Ron, who has definitely been with us the whole time. And then it was time for the big finale, and I mean big. Holy Charizard, look at him. Charizard drops a super effective Max Rockfall on top of poor Ron. Man. Would've been really nice if someone hadn't forbade me from Dynamaxing. But wait! Ron holds on with a tiny sliver of health! He- Oh. Sand. Once again, I get sabotaged because my Pokémon can't handle a bit of bad weather. Peter sends out Blubs to deal a huge blow to Charizard's health bar, but unfortunately he's packing a grass move, and... No! With Charizard's Gigantamax finally wearing off, it was time for a mother's touch. Mama Jelly sends out an overdrive, dealing the final hit to Charizard, and as it goes down, so does Leon's reign as the unbeatable champion of Galar. But unfortunately, this was a title that Peter would never be able to claim. I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? There was still one sabotage left. Oh no, what? Delete your save file. No! If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Also, drop a comment down below with your favorite sabotage. Delicious.